Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back. Thank you so much to all of you guys who are subscribed. Thank you so much to all of you guys who have chosen to be members. Um, if you're not a member on my space yet, the space with JK, I highly do recommend that you become a member chat because I did a current favorites and I know some of y'all love that. You know, just throwing it. I'm throwing it in there so that you guys know what you're missing out. If you're not in the membership space now as you can see in the title down below this is going to be the 35 things that I've learned in 35 years now last week it was my birthday last week it was my birthday and obviously you know when your birthday comes around you know you reflect you think about things um, and also it's just you know it's a time for me to share my age because I, I get asked about my age quite a bit and I'm just like but I mention my age quite a lot I think it's rude that you ask people for their age but personally I, I said it I'm saying it again today okay these are the 35 things that I've learned in 35 years and of course I can't remember all of them off the top of my head so I've got them on my phone we're gonna talk around it I am having my first meal of the day which is a smoothie because whoa but on loan I can catch me outside because the holiday I was eating bard bird actually all right so point number one is it's okay to cut people off for your own peace of mind I have learned this and I learned it the hard way because a lot of the time the people that I've had to cut off for my peace of mind are people that I really, really, truly like, man, I love those people so much, but sometimes you're dealing with a toxic person. Sometimes you're dealing with a person who doesn't realize the impact that you have in their life and that they have in your life. And because of that, they tend to mistreat you in some certain types of way or act all funky when you call them out on their BS or whatever. So sometimes, for you to be able to sleep at night, you might just have to cut some people off. And it's great for your peace of mind. It's just great when you're moving forward with your life, when you're trying to start something new or get on with the journey of your life. Some people are going to fall away. Some people are people that are in your life for a season not for your lifetime. They're there for that period of time, whether it may be family, friends, colleagues, uh, 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 anybody anybody a lover whatever it may be it's okay to cut people off point number two drink water just drink water i i really don't need to emphasize this point because i feel like if you're on this channel and you follow this channel you know how much water i drink just drink water it's good for your skin it's good for your reproductive organs it's good for your organs it's good for your health it's good for your everything just in what mates you hey hey now wait now i don't understand or some some things are the obvious man like when how do you feel at the end of the day when you realize or yo which today i haven't had water marking with a cocoa and coffee and this and this but you haven't had a water drink a water please just just drink a water okay you'll be fine the next point is everyone's journey is different you may not have achieved what your peers or your age mates may have achieved at a certain point in your life and that's okay because everyone's journey is different if you are going to compare yourself to other people and feel like wow you know now lady's 28 and she's achieved this and she's achieved that and palace's 30 and she's achieved this and she's achieved that and so on so on and you're going to live your life constantly comparing yourself to other people you're not going to have a fulfilling life you're not going to have a life where you feel like you're in the right place at the right time and that things are going to happen in succession when they are supposed to happen trust God trust the process you need to be able to tepa mudimu if you are tepering mudimu then you know you will be fine you know there's certain things that will be achieved at certain times of your life and that's okay you may not have achieved them as yet but the whole point is you're alive aren't you so when you're alive you still have an opportunity to achieve them so everyone's journey is different really really important to note that the next thing is patience is a virtue. 
I, I know we've heard this so many times. We've heard it so many times. Hey, patience is a virtue. Patience is key. It's true. Patience is a virtue. You may not have achieved what you wanted to achieve at 24, 25. You thought that at 24, 25, you would be a mogul. You would be like literally living your best life, be CEOing, doing this, doing this. And then maybe it happens that at 25, you're still studying right? And all your peers have achieved, you know, they've gotten promoted at work, they're buying flashy cars, they're doing whatever, and here you're sitting and you're taking a, a taxi to work and what have you. Patience is key. Many people only tap into that part of their lives from their late 30s all the way into their 40s, 50s, 60s. So you really need to be easy on yourself and actually realize that patience is key in this point in time. Just because you haven't achieved what you thought you would have achieved at a certain age doesn't mean you're not going to achieve it. Everyone's journey is different, but patience is key to being able to accomplish all the things that you want to accomplish. So I've noticed that. I note, I noted that in so many things that I wanted to achieve personally for my life at the age that I am right now, there's so many things that I haven't achieved that are so meaningful for me and for my life and for the purpose of my life that I'm just like, okay, one day at a time, Jimmy, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it happen, but it's only one day at a time. So change is constant. A goal that is delayed doesn't necessarily mean that it is a goal that is denied. You need to understand that change will consistently happen. There will be things that will obstruct you. There will be things that will become uh, obstacles on the way. But if you change your mindset to thinking that, okay, these obstacles are building blocks. These obstacles or these, these, these uh, little obstructions that keep happening along the way are building blocks. Failure doesn't necessarily mean you haven't succeeded. Failure means that you know now what not to do. So you now have an opportunity to do it another way. That's basically all it is. Change is constant and you need to know that a goal delayed is not a goal denied. So if you want to be a chartered accountant and it takes you 10 years to become a chartered accountant, the goal was delayed. It wasn't denied. It didn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be a chartered accountant unless you give up. Then it's a completely different story if you choose to give up. But a goal delayed is not a goal denied. So change is constant. It's going to happen all the time. Things will be thrown in your path that might have to make you reassess, refocus, reanalyze, reflect, and think about, okay, how do I do it differently, right? How do I, how do I still keep my sense core, my core sense of self, but maybe just move away from doing things this way and doing it that, that way. Change is always going to be a constant thing in everyone's life. Now, this one might be a little bit of a contentious one, but let's get into it. Okay. Let's get into it. Love is a choice. You choose who you want to love. And let me tell you something. This for me, catch me outside. I learned it the hard way. You choose who you want to love, whether it be uh, your friend, your family member, your lover, or, or an inanimate thing, what you want to love. You want to love cocaine? You choose to love cocaine. You choose to love to travel. You choose to love to eat burgers every day. It's all a choice. Loving something or anything or anyone is a choice. So the relate, the choice that you have chosen to be in a relationship with Uprafistos uh, 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 is your choice. You chose to do that. So people can come back and easily say that, oh no, um, no, you know, sometimes you don't choose who you fall in love with. You don't choose who, you know, I mean, love isn't, you don't choose who you fall in love with. You don't choose where your heart is drawn to. You do, you do. Because there's always something that'll prop up. Yes, you might be initially attracted to someone and attracted to their characteristics and whatever, but love typically grows. Okay, so for me, love at first sight, I don't know. I would rather say attraction at first sight or whatever, lust at first sight, but I wouldn't typically say love at first sight, okay? So when I'm talking about interpersonal relationships with friends and all of that, loving that particular person is a choice on your part. 
You choose to stay in a toxic relationship. You choose to stay in a toxic friendship. You choose to love this one friend of yours that keeps coming at you with the most nonsense that is a horrible friend to you. You choose to want to participate and involve yourselves in their lives and involve yourself in their lives. So saying that you love them, it's a choice on your part. So love is a choice. It's a choice. It's not. This one is an obvious one. Save. Put money away. If you can, do it. If you can't, it's okay. Maybe you're not in a place in your life or a phase in your life or a stage in your life or a, a moment in your life where you can save. That is fine. But when you can, do it. There is nothing more satisfying and more uh, rewarding and more comfort inducing than knowing that you have saved money should things change or should things pop up right a funeral pops up at home and you're a breadwinner and you're thinking gosh i don't have money but if you've put something away you can use it for a rainy day if you've put something away just 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 instead of going to conquer every weekend put some monies away because Konka this weekend will be the same as Konka next weekend. And it will be the same as Konka two months from now. It's the same thing. So if you can just deny yourself certain things, certain pleasures of life, because you're choosing to look at your future and you're choosing to make financial decisions that'll help you in the future and engaging with financial advisors and people who are going to help you utilize your money to the best of its ability, do that. Because nothing about Konka is going to help you if you lose your job and you need to now come up with some sources of money. Nothing about Konka is going to help you. You need to, there's a saying that you need to save so much so in the sense that you can have six months worth of your salary should you get into a position where you lose your job. Save, even if it's a hundred bucks, even if it's 50 bucks, put it away and don't touch it. Don't look at it, forget about it. If you don't get it, forget about it. Catch me outside, how about that? The next one is something that is very obvious for someone like me and especially on this space that I share with you guys. Mental health is very important. Nurturing your mental health at whatever cost helps you become a well more rounded off person. It grounds you, it helps you manage and mitigate whatever situation, circumstance may come your way without completely losing yourself. Mental health is so important that I cannot stress it enough. I talk about mental health in almost every single one of my videos. I'll touch base in it. I talk about it a lot in my membership space as well. Mental health is so important. So nurturing it and doing whatever it takes whether that be seeing a psychologist, whether that be cutting people off for your own peace of mind, whether that be taking some time off from social media and digital detoxing, whether that may be whatever it may be, nurturing and looking after your mental health is one of the most important things you can do for your life going forward. And if this is not something that I realize now in the time that I was away, then I'll never realize it. But truthfully, Mental health, help, help yourself, help yourself so that you can help others. Next point is hurt people, hurt people. Okay, take a moment, catch me outside. If you don't get it, forget about it, all right? Hurt people, hurt people. So if somebody comes and is just, just you have no idea why this person is treating you this way, or the cyberbullying and people mentioning horrible things in your comment section below. Oh, you're boring. Oh, you do this. Oh, you blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're so full of crap. Oh, you, you could do better. Oh, you need to lose a little bit of weight. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hurt people hurt people. It really has nothing to do with you. If somebody says something horrible to you that is completely unwarranted, that is completely unnecessary, you never saw it coming, you weren't fighting with this person, you don't know this person from a bar of soap, yet there they go running their mouth about you and you find out about it. Hurt people, hurt people. You must always come back to that. Hurt people, hurt people. And when you nurture your mental health, 
and you work on yourself, you will not have a reason to hurt that person in return because you will know that it has nothing to do with me. I'm dealing with my own stuff right now. That which this person is doing to me and trying to, to, to ruin when it comes to me and my life has nothing to do with me. Hurt people hurt people. The next one I think for me was really, really hard to acknowledge, make peace with, uh, find some sense of understanding with. No one owes you a damn thing. No one owes you anything. No one owes you any form of validation. No one owes you any form of respect, trust. No one owes you any form of love, care, understanding. No one owes you any form of looking after you, whether it be financially, mentally, emotionally. No one owes you anything. Not your parents, not your siblings, not your friends. No one owes you a damn thing. And it's hard to make this realization because we live, no man is an island. We live with people. We interact with people each and every single day. But in truth, no one owes you any of that. No one owes you kindness. No one owes you respect. No one owes you loyalty. People will always do whatever they want to do. How you react to that is very important. What you owe to yourself is very important. This is something that you have control over. And when you have control over something, you can determine what the outcome of that something becomes, right? You can determine it. Sometimes things are out of our control, but when you are in control, you'll realize that no one owes you anything. Your boyfriend doesn't owe you loyalty. They don't. You would like them to be loyal to you. You would like your sister to respect you. You would like your colleague to understand that we're colleagues. I'm not a subordinate to you. I'm not a whatever. We're level, top, same tier, same grading colleagues. But they still treat you like you're a child. And they still treat you like you're black. And they still treat you like you're a female and you don't know anything about the line of work that you're in. They do not owe you any form of anything. You owe yourself everything. So how you react to that is what's important. How you treat others is what's important. Not the other way around. No one owes you a damn thing, sis. And it's a hard realization to make, but it's an honest and a truthful one. You are responsible for your future. Putting your future in somebody else's hands is the worst thing you can do for yourself. You are responsible for your future. You cannot put that in the, in the hands of someone else. You can't say that now, because my father brought me into the world, at my age, I'm expecting my father to be responsible for me? What? Where? The only people that are, can actually say that you are responsible for me are children. So when you are not a kid anymore, and unale ID, unale pasa, you've got an ID, you've got an, a, 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 an, an ID number, mm? and you're working and you're scholaring and you're this and you're this, and you're above 18, no one is responsible for you. Nobody. That's why your parents will come, come through with you up until you get to 18. Once you get to 18, they're like, and then what's your plan in life? No one is responsible for you. You are responsible for you and your future. Your future is in your hands. So once you start knowing that, yo, 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 the decisions that I make today can highly impact the, my, my future tomorrow, then you know or you need to be very cognizant of whatever types of decisions you are making today. You need to know that. You need to put that in your head and be like, okay, okay, it's all on me. If I don't make the most of this one here life that I've got, that's it, it's done. No one People process things differently. If there's one thing that I've learned, especially in the last year or two, people process things differently to you and that is okay. You should be able to understand that just because you are a confrontational person, if things are happening, you want to confront it now. If your friend is mad at you, or you're mad at your partner, or you're mad at your dad, and you want to confront it now, you want to sit down and talk to them, blah, blah. Maybe your friend, or your partner, or your dad, or your mom, or your cousin needs some time to process what you've just said. 
They need time to be able to align themselves and their mental train of thought to what you are saying. So they process things differently and you need to be able to give them that space. If you process things with confrontation and you want things to happen now, in this moment, let it happen right now, that's how you operate. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's how everybody else operates. You'll note that in school, your certain classmates did things differently. They did projects differently. They, you know, time management is different to everybody else. You can, I can film four videos in a day because my time management says I do not have time to film like once every day. I have to go to work. I have to do the, the, this, this, blah, blah, blah. Whereas you can't film more than one video a day. Your mental capacity is drained. It's done. You, you don't want to look at a camera and whatever. Process things differently. People process things differently. And I feel like it's one thing that we all need to understand and, and come to terms with and be cognizant of. People process things very differently. And you need to be okay with that. Your triggers and your emotional reaction to something is all on you. You cannot place that responsibility on somebody else. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you cannot expect that the person that you are dealing with needs to manage what they say to you or how they react to you just so that they don't trigger you. you that's not fair. You cannot place the responsibility of managing your emotional reaction or triggers to anything on that other person. So yeah, it's your fault that I got triggered. No, 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 no. You got triggered. Something that may have happened in your time back then, before your interaction with this person, triggered you then, and now they have said something now that's triggering you now. That has nothing. You cannot place the responsibility in their hands and make them feel like they need to walk around eggshells with you because they don't want to trigger you or make you emotionally react to something. How you react is very important, but that's in your hands. That's, res that's you being responsible, you choosing to manage your emotional reactions or your triggers and not expecting someone else to do that for you. Simple. Kindness doesn't cost you anything. Be kind. Be kind. If you've got nothing positive to say to somebody, don't say anything at all. But just be kind. It does not, it's not going to cost you anything just to be nice to somebody and be kind and leave it at that. It's not going to cost you anything. So kindness won't cost you a damn thing. Just be kind. If you've got nothing positive to say, say nothing at all. It's that simple. Reading, coloring, finding anything that brings you some sort of escape, peace of mind and calmness is important. The older you get, you realize how much significance doing that has on your life. So find something that brings you some sense of kindness, kindness, that brings you some sense of calmness, that brings you some sense of a safe space, uh, relaxes you, or, or just puts you in a very positive, stable form of mind. It's really, really important to find whatever it is that will work for you. For me, it's reading and coloring, but for you, it may be running. For you, for somebody else, it may be, um, I don't know, journaling. For somebody else, it may be cleaning your house or whatever. Find something that helps pull you out of a dark place, maybe anger, sorrow, whatever, and just helps calm you and stabilize you a little bit. That's so important to get you through life. It's so, so, so important. One. Take off your makeup before you go to bed. Please, look after your skin. Look after your face. Take off your makeup before you go to bed. And while you're at it, before you leave your house every day, wear sunscreen. I'm using that as one point. Take off your makeup before you go to bed. Don't come with excuses. It's going to take literally five minutes of your time. Take off your makeup before you go to bed. Preserve the skin that you have. I can never fall asleep with makeup on. You can catch me outside. I won't. I would rather... I remember the one time I was using his facial wash because I didn't have anything at his house that I could use for my face. I didn't have Dove soap, I didn't have nothing. I had to use his facial wash and wow, did it sting my eyes. But I was like, mehe, going to bed with makeup on, catch me outside. So one thing, take off your makeup every day before you go to bed. 
wash your face and put on some sunscreen please please okay it's okay to say no it's okay to say no and you do not owe anyone any explanation as to why you're saying no if somebody says can you borrow me 500 bucks i need to do whatever whatever no is a suitable answer they don't need to they and besides who is going to come at you and say how mara why catch me outside me explaining to you why i've said no no is a perfectly decent and respectable and understandable response just as much as yes is so it's okay to say no if they don't like no if they don't like your no hey amen it be like that sometimes they don't like your no catch me outside how about that because i'm not going to do anything but give you the no answer so it's okay to say no say it and once you start saying no once you start learning to say no 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 it's going to come to you as easy as saying yes really it's going to come to you just as easy as saying yes so say no say no girl it, it just it just be like that sometimes okay it be like that movement is key go to the gym take a walk count your steps while you're in the house make sure that you move your body somehow Sometimes gym doesn't work for people. Sometimes running doesn't work for people. Sometimes people just want to walk, count their steps, walk around your yard, listen to an audio book, listen to music, right, in your earphones and then just walk or clean the house or whatever. It's some sort of movement. Movement is key, really really important. Just do it. Just do it, okay? Just move your body. If you don't do it, no one else will. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's to the point. If you don't do it, no one else will. If you don't work on your mental health, no one else will. If you don't ensure that you find a job so that uh you can be able to take care of yourself and your family and black tax and whatever, no one else will help you do that for you. Okay? If you do not cut your toxic people out of your life, no one else will do that for you, but you. If you do not call people out on their BS, and make them see that you are not with me with me you're not going to do this with me no nah, not today not today i'm not going to do this with you my partner loves to say this when i when i like to provoke him and he'll say i'm not going to do this with you today if you don't do it no one else will if you don't say it no one else will so really really important to know that it's all on you like i said it's all on you no one owes you anything you owe yourself everything the next one is your friends friends are not your friends. You got it? Your fr if you don't get it, forget about it. Your friends' friends are not your friends. And that's okay. That's something we need to understand. Palace says the one who made me really realize that is that her friends, Palace has got friends that she went to school with or grew up with and whatever. They are not my friends. Even though I may have hung out with them at some point and whatever, they are not my friends. Your friends' friends are not your friends. Therefore, you cannot be going around discussing your friend with them because they're not your friends. It just it why? Discuss you and your friend with your friend together. Discuss each other together. But your friends' friends are not your friends. Your boyfriend's friends are not your friends. Your girlfriend's friends are not your friends. So you need to understand, draw the line, okay? Draw the line. That makes me, leads me into my next point. Boundaries are healthy, okay? Boundaries are healthy and a very necessary part of life. You have to draw boundaries with parents, with siblings, with colleagues, with lovers. You have to draw boundaries. Let people know that there are certain lines not to cross when it comes to you. It's not gonna work. Catch me outside. Okay? You, I mean, if you don't get it, forget about it. You have to draw boundaries because when you draw boundaries, I have an episode about this on my podcast. When you draw boundaries, you show people that there's certain things that you are not gonna allow. That is not gonna fly with me period. You draw the boundary, you tell your person that if you cheat, that's it. I'm done. We're done. That's a boundary. You're drawing a boundary. You tell your person that if you disrespect or you tell your friends, if you disrespect my family or if you disrespect me or my parent, whatever, that's it. Our friendship is done. You understand? Drawing boundaries is really important. Even in a work situation, you're there to work. You're not there to make friends. 
You can make friends as well, but you, you, hear, you hear my chat. You're there to work. So draw boundaries. Highly, highly important. Yeah, make your bed, clean your room, wash your body. It's self-care. That's it. The next point is very, very important to me and it should be very, very important to you. Tip people in the service industry. If there is a waiter, waitress situation, petrol attendant who helped you fill up your car, whatever, if you can, tip them. It doesn't matter how much you tip them. We have that 10% thing going on when you're at a restaurant and your bill is 600 bucks and you tip the waiter 10%. You tip them 60 bucks. If you can give their, hey, my sister, my sister, a five rent, give them. These people are there looking after your car. These people are there, um, you know, doing your hair. They're in the service industry. So if you can give them, or do, doing your nails. I know that with, with Bandile, with my um, nail tech, I tend to give her, sometimes, I'll tend to be like, ah, extra 50 bucks, buy yourself lunch or whatever. These people are looking after you. And they're making you look good, okay? Or they're making you eat good. Or they're looking after your car or whatever. If you can, or they're helping fill up your tank. If you can, tip people in the service industry. It really, really is so important because those people go through a lot. They deal with very disrespectful people and typically their salaries are nothing compared to what you earn and all of that. So please, if you can, tip people in the service industry. Thanks. Yeah, mean girl energy, it's not cute. I don't like it. I don't like people with mean girl energy who are gonna go around acting all nice and cute and whatever. And then when they, when they, the one moment mobile the one moment mobile where they get drunk or where they get seen in public spaces and they're drunk and they're saying whatever, mean girl energy is not cute. And mean girl energy is really quickly picked up upon because if anything, it just looks arrogant and then it leads people to believing that you're actually quite ignorant. Okay, so there's, I, there's nothing that I find cute about being a mean girl. Nothing, you know, you can be a baddie, but mean girl energy, being a Regina George, nothing cute about it. Don't be a Regina George. Don't, it's not cute, it's not cute. Leave it, let it, no, no. Learn to love your body. It is so important. Our bodies are going to change with time. It's just the normal process of life, bro. It really is all it is. Your body is going to change with time. You're gonna gain weight, you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna this, you're gonna that, you're gonna this, you're gonna that. Your body will show you a lot of things. Learn to love it in its normal state, in whatever state it's in. You've gained a couple of kilos, learn to love your body. You've lost a couple of kilos, learn to love your body. You got, you, got, you got love handles, you got whatever. Learn to love your body. You only have one throughout your life. And why waste your life hating what your body looks like when you could be living your life loving your body? What do you even mean? So learn to love your body. It takes time, but it's not impossible. It's definitely doable. Okay? Okay. Yeah, you cannot do everything for free really really important you can be however nice you can be like oh i'll just do it in kind and this and that and the other no you cannot do everything for free everything comes at a cost you can work with brands and choose that no with these brands i'll work free whatever with certain you can't do it for all of them so there's something that you need to understand is that not everything is free everything comes at a cost so you can't always consistently be giving out free services of whatever uh, 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 thing you do or product you produce or whatever service that you render for free. You can't do that. Everything comes at a cost. Okay. It's okay not to want a child. It's okay not to want to be married. It is your life after all and you should be able to have the choice to do whatever it is that you want to do with your life. Also, it is okay to change your mind. So if you, if you didn't want a child in your 20s and then you get to 28 or 29, 30 and you realize, no, actually, I do want a child. I want a little human running around who's going to be able to continue on my legacy in life. That's okay. You can change your opinion. You don't want to get married? Fine. You want to get married to a man? You want to get married to a woman? You want to get married to a gender non-binary person? Fine. It's your life at the end of the day. So what you choose to do with it is fine. So people who are going to come at you and be like, why are you gay? Why are you this? Why are you this? Why don't you have any kids? Why aren't you married? Blah, 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 blah. 
Maybe answer them by asking them, Nguti, why aren't you? Why aren't you married? Why did you choose to be married? Why did you choose to have children? Just make them see, Nguti, I'm not here for this conversation. It's my choice and I'm not going to have to explain it to anybody, not even you. When you're in a panic or when you feel like your anxiety is packing up, count from 10 to one and close your eyes and take deep breaths, okay? If you're driving, pull over to the side and do what I say. This is really important because it really does work. There's something chemical that happens in your brain, but you have to be present and actually do it if you want to see the results. Count from 10 to one, right? Slowly, slowly and take very deep breaths. I promise you it's gonna help you feel a lot better once you're done. Very, 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 very good point that. Live within your means. Live within your means. Don't run yourself broke trying to live a life that you are seeing on people's social media profiles or on Instagram or on whatever or trying to project that you're living this amazing life and you're, you're doing these amazing things and you're driving this amazing car and you're living. Live within your means. More than anything, if we want to go one up, live below your means. Okay? Don't live above your means. Live within your means or below. Like literally be very frugal if you have to. But, but that's another story because then frugal people are then frugal to people they care about and whatever and that's another story. But live within your means. There is no need to try and run yourself to the ground because you want to be a beauty influencer and now you have to buy all this makeup that you can't afford because makeup is not being sent to you but now you're sitting here and you're looking at Michali and you're looking at Naledi and you're looking at um, whoever else does beauty influencing and whatever that, ah, but you know, they have so much makeup. I should get all this makeup. I should get Fenty. I should get whatever. But you can't afford Fenty. So why are you buying Fenty? They are not buying Fenty. Fenty is buying them <laughs> by sending them all of this stuff. So basically, they are not, do not live above your means based on what you see from your favorite social media creators or from your favorite celebrities. Do not do that. You will run, run yourself into bankruptcy and debt. Do not do that. Live within your means, please. Listen, please. Okay, listen. You can disagree with someone and still respect them. Very, very important for you to note this. You can disagree with someone and still respect them. Disagreeing with somebody means that it doesn't mean you're, you're disrespecting them in any way. As long as you can approach the disagreement from a mature perspective and you do not make them about the individual themselves, you do not make what you are disagreeing with about the individual themselves, then that's fine. You can have a disagreement with your sister or your partner or whatever and feel like, no, for me, I feel like it should, no, it should be done this way and they feel it should be done that way. Okay, let's agree to disagree, leave it and let it be. So you can disagree with someone and still love them and respect them, okay? Okay. Some parents are toxic, okay? Some parents are so toxic that they... Man, they are the reason why some of us have problems out here, okay? They have toxic traits. We're not going to sit here and lie and say, no, we have the best parents. Sometimes our parents bring up our toxic traits that we carry with us within our lives. So it's really important to note those kinds of things so that when you're a parent, you can try shy away from raising your child a certain way because you know what it's like and you know what it did to you. Some parents are just toxic, bro. And it's okay to actually say that out loud. Ngasabi, ngasabi, or or mkulmama, mkuni iso leli, or mkulmama, or mnama, angnama, angnama, mkuni iso leli. Yeah, one? So, be like that sometimes. Okay. Yeah, so no one, no one will judge you if you wear the same outfit more than once. Because what social media has done, it's now made it seem like you have to wear a different outfit each and every single time. You can't be seen on the streets in the same outfit more than once. No, it's okay to wear the same outfit more than once, five times, 10 times. I know the black dress that I love, I've probably worn more than 30 times and I love it. It's one of my favorite dresses. I'm wearing sweats all the time. And you see the sweaters all the freaking time. It's okay to wear something more than once. Do not let social media dictate to you that mm, 
mm, you need to get your wardrobe in check just because you're seeing somebody else on social media who can afford to wear one thing once or is sent clothes and so they can afford to wear that thing more than once don't don't compare yourself don't do that don't do that okay choose a partner that has the same values as you you and your partner can be different that's fine that's fine but if you align yourselves with the same values it's very very good to to that brings a lot of uh longevity and it brings a, a, a much deeper connection with that person because at your core as individuals your values are the same so choose someone with the same core values as you they may be different they may be an extrovert but have the same values as you you may be an introvert they're an extrovert or an ambivert but have the same values as you so choose someone with core values that align with yours or that are similar to yours because then it makes your connection and the bond that you share stronger which then in turn provides longevity for your relationship if you guys are completely different and one person loves to party all the time and the other one loves to sit in the house all the time but you know no because you love them it's fine it's gonna eventually at some point there will be friction so you have to choose somebody who's got core values that are very similar to yours if you want it to work out to bond the, the connection to be stronger and longevity for the relationship choose someone with the same core values so so important love will come love will come patience is key I said it I said it patience is key so if you're sitting there thinking I've never been in love before could I be asexual I'm not meeting people that you know I align with I'm meeting really shitty people but I really want to be in love and I really want to be with somebody and whatever love will come the truest most rawest most beautiful most indulgent most rewarding form of love will come you just need to be patient and allow it to come don't constantly be worried about it no and then the last point is and this is my favorite point my favorite 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 point the last point is your 30s will be better than in your 20s i can guarantee you your 30s will be better than your 20s 20s are such a confusing time and you're worried about this and you're thinking about this and this and this and you want to achieve this and you're comparing yourself to this and blah 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 it's so unstable there's just so much going on in your 20s your 30s will be better than your 20s i promise you that much catch me outside i promise you that much okay that's pretty much it those are the 35 things that i've learned in the 35 years of my life i've probably learned a lot more than that what have you learned in the years of your life that uh you would like to share share it down below and uh yeah that's it from me i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you have subscribed to the channel also join the membership space and i'll see you in the next video until then sayonara